Hi, this is Minister Pat Holmes with Saints on Assignment Ministries, and I want to share a word today with uh, parents who are burdened down, parents who are going through, who are grieved excessively because of the entrapments of their children. And uh, I believe this will be a revelatory word, a word of encouragement, a word to empower you. Uh, children make wrong choices as we did as uh, uh, when we were uh, younger, and they become entrapped by the enemy. The enemy goes, as we know, to and fro, seeking whom he may devour. And I want to share a word from the word, and I want to deal with the word pitch, P-I-T-C-H. The word pitch can be found in the Bible in 19 different verses 16 times and most of the times the word pitch is used in regards to pitching a tent or erecting a tent but two particular times the word pitch has a different meaning and I want to share those two times with you and I know it's going to be a revelatory word to empower you to stand in the midst of your battle the first time the word pitch was used in the Bible was in regards to God speaking to Noah and instructing Noah to be build an ark from gopher wood. And the word pitch in that particular scripture, I'm going to read it to you quickly. It's in the scripture, Genesis 6 and 14. Make thee an ark of gopher wood. Rooms shalt thou make in the ark, and thou shalt pitch it within and without with pitch. The word pitch is used there twice. Now listen to the meaning of the word pitch uh, both times. Uh, the first word where he said, thou shalt pitch it within. In the Hebrew, it's the word kafir. Now I know that doesn't mean a lot to us, but listen to the meaning of it. The word pitch there means atonement, to cover. It means to purge. It means reconciliation, to forgive. It also means to cleanse, and it has the word merciful and pardon. So God instructed Noah to build this ark and the pitch that was used, which was a type of asphalt, to hold it together. That word pitch was symbolic of all these things, atonement, meaning to cover. And we know that ark was a type and shadow of Jesus. Jesus is our atonement. He is the ark of safety. But let me give you the second time that the word pitch is used in the Bible with that particular meaning in regards to cover, in regards to atonement, in regards to mercy and forgiveness. And it was when Moses' mom built an ark for the baby Moses. You all remember the story, how Pharaoh had sent out an order that all the boy babies would be killed. And Moses' mom hid the baby Moses in her house for three months. And it's sort of like us raising our children, how we, you know, we are the covering for them. We are the voice of reason reasoning for them when they're in our homes. And uh, we are the ones that go before the Lord in atonement on their behalf. But then there comes a time when that child is, is out from under your jurisdiction when they become of certain age. And sometimes they're still in the house and because of rebellion, they, they'll, they'll uh, remove themselves from under your jurisdiction, from under your voice of reasoning. But I love what Moses' mom did. And this is what's going to be an encouraging word to you. If if you are a parent that's going through today because of wrong choices of your children. The Bible teaches us, as we well know, that she also built an ark. Now listen to this. This scripture is in Exodus 2 and 3, Moses' mom. And it says, when she could not no longer hide him, and perhaps that's where you are today. You've done all you can do. You rescued him out of jail. You've gone to dope houses and you pulled him out of dope houses. You've gone to uh, the home homes of some of their friends where there shouldn't be and you rescued them out of that. But the Bible says concerning Moses' mom, and when she could not longer hide him, she took for him an ark of bulrushes and dabbed it with slime and with pitch. There's that word again. That word uh, meaning again atonement to cover. But listen to the other meaning of the word pitch. It means ransom and it also means satisfaction. And I'll show you how that works in, in just a moment in regards to what I'm teaching. So she covered this ark that she made with pitch and put the child therein and she laid it in the flags by the river's brink. 
And we know the story of uh, the baby Moses in that ark. You know, I'm an illustrator of teaching, so this is my little ark today. This is, this is my big ark, actually. So she put that baby in that ark, and we know the baby Moses just went on down the river. And it's so interesting with those flags. It was a, a, a water plant, and I thought a large water plant. And Jesus is the plant in the Father God. He is the one that said when you go through the waters, you won't drown, and when you go through the fire, you won't burn. So Moses' mom put that baby in that ark and he floated down the river. We know the story. His sister was watching over the ark and Pharaoh's daughter came out and saw the ark and she took the baby Moses as her own. I want to say to parents that are going through and that are excessively grieved today, going through because of wrong decisions of your children, they have become entrapped. In your prayer time, in your closet, see yourself in your mind's eye building an ark. Build an ark of prayer for your children. This is an application that I uh, adopted in my life a long time ago, raising children. Anybody that has raised children, you know there are testing times concerning children because we're all free will agents and uh, sometimes they just make bad decisions. But as a prayer warrior, you can build an ark in your private closet. See yourself, and I'm not saying a little ark, but a spiritual ark. See yourself placing that child in in that ark. Know that that ark has pitch on it, that it has atonement on it. That ark is pitched in mercy, it's pitched in grace, it's pitched in forgiveness. Another meaning was ransom that we shared a while ago. That Jesus is the ransom. He paid the price for each one of us. And know that God has a plan for your child. When Moses' mom put that baby in that ark, don't you know her heart was so fearful, wondering what will become of my child but by faith she put the baby in the ark. That is a type and shadow for each one of us as parents. Put your children in that ark of safety in prayer. Trust God to bring them through. You know, even over in Pharaoh's house, that is symbolic of the enemy's house. God still had his hand on the baby Moses. God had a plan for the baby Moses. And I want you to know God has a plan for your child. Right now, maybe they're, they've been taken captive by the enemy. Right now, maybe they're bound up on drugs. Right now, maybe they're involved in, Ill, in illegal activity. Whatever it is they're bound up in, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. I want you to know that the or Jesus Christ atonement has already paid for it all. That Jesus is a deliverer. And even as the baby Moses was drawn out of the waters, your child will be drawn out of the troubled waters. We don't know the times and the seasons of God, but we know that God does not lie. That God has given us a promise. He has, he has said salvation is for us and for our household. So again, when you get in that prayer closet, see in your mind's eye, Lord, I'm placing my child in this ark. This ark that's symbolic of atonement. This ark that's symbolic of mercy. And you know what? That ark was symbolic of deliverance, was it not? Because when Noah built that ark, all those that were within, they were saved from the troubled water. So spiritually speaking, place your child in that ark. Place your child through the words of your mouth in God's atonement. Decree the blessings and the breakthrough of the Lord over your child and watch God perform. Amen. I want to pray with you again. This was a word, a burden on my heart for parents that are going through, but I realize there are many that are going through. So we're going to pray right now. Hook up with me in agreement. Father, we just thank you, Lord God. We thank you for the promises of the word of God. And I thank you for the promise that said, God is not a man that he can lie. Neither is he the son of man that he has to repent. What he has said, shall he not do it? And what he has spoken, shall he not make it good? Father, I thank you that you have spoken in your word deliverance for us, your children. You told us to ask, you told us to seek, and you told us to knock. So, Father, that's what we're doing right now. We're asking, we're seeking, and we're knocking. And we thank you that the promises of God are yea and amen. Lord, we trust.